the Polyglot Gathering is brought to you by italki. Become fluent in any language. Hello, everyone. So, um, we're italki, um, in case you're confused. Uh, there are signs on the right and the left. And uh, we are a uh, language teaching platform that connects uh, teachers and students. So we just wanted to meet uh, people who use us, people who don't use the platform. Uh, have a chat, get some feedback, and tell you our stories. So my story, first of all. How many of you guys like know like what is Italki of ever use it? Can you raise your hands? Oh, okay. So most of you already know us. Like good. Thanks, guys. Nice. All right. So uh, my name is Ivan, and I was born in Saint Petersburg, Russia. I grew up in the U.S. and eventually I moved to China. And uh, a couple of years uh, ago, I joined Italki team because um, I like languages. I speak multiple ones, as uh, everyone else here, I guess. And uh, I happen to live in Shanghai. So this is a question that gets asked a lot. Why do you guys uh, have an office in Shanghai? And that's really the answer is because we just live there. So uh, I joined and I work in marketing, I work in PR. Uh, if you have a blog or if you have a video blog or if you just want to do a project with us, come talk to me, uh, and we'll be happy to try and work something out. Uh, in the meantime, what I wanted to share with you is actually uh, the story of my wow moment. So we talk about a wow moment. We talk about the idea of doing something, some sort of a hobby, or some sort of a language learning uh, enterprise, or really anything that you like doing. And learning a skill, getting to the point where you actually enjoy um, the work of doing the set skill. So mine uh, in language learning happened a bit late. It actually happened uh, just a few months back when I started learning Esperanto. And I realized actually why I liked learning language. Um, I learned Russian because I was born in Russia. I learned Ukrainian because I lived in Ukraine. I learned English because I had to. I learned German because surprisingly enough the American school system actually uh, made me. So <laughs> cool. Uh, I learned Chinese because I liked it, but uh, Chinese is obviously a very difficult, annoying to study language. Um, no offense, but we've, I, I've been living with it for multiple, multiple, multiple years now, and my shaping is still handy. Um, <laughs> that all said, when I started learning Esperanto, I finally had an experience of letting go. I talked to a wonderful Italki teacher, and the first hour it seemed like an obligation. It seemed like um, I owed something to the language, or I owed something to the teacher. Uh, if I didn't get all my homework done, I would stress out and I would feel bad. Uh, and then something happened. Uh, in about hour three of talking to my teacher, I suddenly let go. And I just listened, and I just talked. And all of a sudden, I understood things. All of a sudden, I could actually put together sentences out of the few words that I learned, and I started learning more words, and it became fun. It became actually interesting. It became actually enjoyable to learn. I didn't feel like a kid in school who didn't do his homework. I felt actually enjoying myself doing something difficult. And this is what we like to call the wow moment, the idea of learning a skill when you actually get it, when you actually realize that it's fun to do the work. And we try to create um, an easy way to reach the wow moment in um, your learning experience. Uh, we you know, try to design uh, our site, we're trying to design our service so that you can actually use it as easily as possible in the way that you want to use it and to reach the wow moment as quickly as we can. And of course, the most significant wow moment for us is the interaction with the teacher. It's the ability to, uh, to talk to a teacher and to actually feel like you're learning, feel your progress and feel the enjoyment that you get from interacting with someone. And so, in order to talk about our teachers, I'd like to introduce Tracy Miho, who is in charge of teachers. Thank you. All right. Um, yeah. My name is Tracy. As Ivan said, I manage the teacher services department at Italki, uh, which is part of the larger services department. So, you know, we provide services for and help for the Italki community, uh, people learning languages on Italki, teachers. If any of you have ever written uh, to Italki support, I might have answered your support ticket or somebody sitting right next to me. Um, we have a small team of people who work very hard to make sure that everybody is able to access the services as, as well as possible and able to find the ways that help them most to learn. But um, what, what I wanted to talk to you today 
I was trying to think of what would be something interesting, um, and I want to tell you why I'm not in grad school. So, uh, why I'm not in grad school. Uh, so, let's go back to the beginning. I'm from Wisconsin. Uh, I, I was born and raised in Wisconsin, Midwestern United States. In school, I studied Spanish and then a little bit of German because I ran out of Spanish classes. Unfortunately, I don't really remember how to speak any of those languages. I haven't used them in a while, but if you talk to me in Spanish, I can probably understand you. Uh, from there, I moved to the West Coast for college. I went to Reed College and studied not Chinese, as everyone in China guesses, but math. And uh, there, in addition to learning Chinese, I also tried to study some Arabic because I went to Egypt, and so why not? Unfortunately, I also don't remember very much Arabic, uh, but I do use Chinese a lot in China, which is where I moved after college. Um, people ask me why. I could give you lots of reasons that sound very good, but ultimately it's just because I felt like I needed to go to China. Um, so there I was, sitting in China, uh, having graduated, when I was writing my senior thesis, as I needed to do in order to graduate, I loved my topic, and I hated writing the thesis. I was thinking to myself, I remember very clearly sitting at my thesis desk thinking, oh my gosh, I can't go to grad school. In grad school you have to do more research and you have to write more of these things. And it wasn't that I don't like research. It's not that I don't like very abstract topics and it's not like I won't talk to you all day about them. But it is that it's a, it's a lot of work. And if you do that much work on anything that you don't completely love, you will hate that thing and it will make your life miserable. That almost happened to me, but I loved my topic very much, and so it didn't quite, but I knew I couldn't risk that happening again, so I decided not to go to grad school. Later, I remember very distinctly sitting at my desk in Suzhou, where I was teaching English in a Chinese school, thinking to myself, what am I gonna do with my life? Maybe I should go to grad school. What would I go to grad school for? Others of my friends had gone to school, they spent a lot of money, and now they were telling me years later, like, well, uh, they're not really sure. They don't, they don't really know if that's what they want to keep doing, but they started doing it anyway, and I didn't want to let that happen. So I thought, okay, if I can think of the exact topic that I would study in grad school, and then find a grad school program to do that, I'll do that. What will I do? And I thought about this for a while. I've, I've been interested, I'm interested in a lot of different things, and I got an interest in education reform, but I mean like, oh man, you're like, how is one person ever gonna change anything in education? That seemed impossible. I like math, I like Chinese, I like art, I like history, I like literature, I like all of it. How am I gonna do any one of those things? And I thought, okay, well, what I'm really interested in is learning though. If I could study peer-to-peer -peer learning as facilitated by social networks, I'd go to grad school for that. Come to mine. You have a, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Alright, so because I didn't know about her grad school program, um, <laughs> I, I got interested in business in China. It occurred to me that China might be an interesting place for startups and for business. Um, turns out it is. And I, I moved to Shanghai where I... Let's see, am I getting ahead of myself? Yes, where I met the co-founders of Italki. And I realized, wait a minute, I don't have to pay to go to grad school to work on this kind of stuff. I could just work at this company. So that is how I found and started working at Itaki. Um, in the approximately two years that I've been there, I've been working on the service department. I actually tried to work on the tech team first, but they said, well, since you have education experience, you should manage the teachers. And I thought, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, in those two years, I've, I've seen probably hundreds, maybe thousands of teacher applications come through. I've answered hundreds, maybe thousands of student emails asking us questions about the website, how to learn a language, how to find the right teacher. And I love what I do. I love what we're doing. Uh, it's, what we're doing is we're trying to find something that actually works. And we don't know the answers yet. It's exciting, that the challenge of finding these answers, of finding what it means to be a language learner, what it means to be a language teacher in a system that's completely different than any institution that I've ever known, is exciting. And it's challenging because no one knows how to do it yet. But the real great thing about working at Italki is that we're surrounded by so many experts. You guys. You guys are the experts in language learning. You guys are the language learners. You're the language teachers. 
and we're doing the best that we can to keep up with you and provide services that will help you learn, help you teach in the ways that, from your years of experience, you know best how to do. So I didn't go to grad school because I want to learn from you guys. We're all searching for the best way to learn, the best way to teach, and that's really inspiring to me, is to see these stories happen on an individual level, to see not just papers and, and theses and books going to libraries, but to see the real practical good that it does for people. People are successfully moving to new countries, people are passing tests and getting their dream jobs, people are traveling and having experiences that they never would have had if they hadn't learned the language of that place or contacted a teacher or a language partner who is able to tell them the things that they know for it. So if you have any ideas or feedback from your own personal experience, from your own use of italki, or, or from other sites or services, or just the things that you discover on your own, please do talk to me about them. I would be very happy to hear about it. And yes, please do talk to me, and answer, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. And with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Andrea. Yeah, let's hear it for Tracy, that was awesome. Thank you. And uh, yeah, so um, I'm Andrea. I take care about uh, user experience and design at Italki. And I've been there also around uh, uh, for around two years uh, at Italki. And uh, one of the main projects that I, I've been working on was the, the redesign of, of our site. Um, I don't know, maybe, actually I forgot, I should have probably opened this one. So if, since uh, some of you are familiar with, um, with Italki, you might have been familiar with our, what we call now, classic site, if the internet worked. <laughs> but it, it doesn't, so never mind. Uh, so this is like the new face of, of Italki that we just made. Like uh, we, um, after, uh, after I joined, I actually started to, um, I actually started to um, made a little research project like to try to understand who are our actual users. Um, and really like what they were taking care of and like uh, who, uh, as Tracy was saying, is uh, our real resource. And like, well, the, the easy answer and to make it quick, it was that it's really, it's you guys. So we were really trying to um, try to recreate uh, a face for, for a talkie that was like more, more aligned with, uh, with our audience. So one of the, one of the main thing that, that we wanted to put up front is like really our, our teachers, that's really who makes who makes uh, our website. Like they're extremely dedicated persons, like that, like spend a lot of time like on our site just to, um, you know, really they really care about like doing their jobs. So we have a few here. I see Leah. Hi, I see uh, Simon there, and like uh, who else is a teacher here? Uh, maybe I haven't. Ooh, wow, so many. <laughs> Great. So who's yeah. Teacher, who's the teacher on Italki? Uh, teacher on Italki, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know, come come and meet us later. Like we, I know like Shanghai it's a bit far, so it's hard to get in touch with you guys directly <laughs> instead of Skype. But anyway, Skype it's like uh, what our uh, basically business model is based on. <laughs> so that's also fine. Uh, so yeah, and the other thing is that we we really <laughs> want to to show that. Um, it's it's fairly simple, like to uh, to just get started with with having a class online. It's uh, uh, maybe our website is still far from being perfect, and like we have a lot of fixes that we want to do. But at the end, you just need to you know to choose a teacher, to choose a time, and just like to connect and really start conversation with real people. As uh, as Ivan and Tracy was saying before, I think that's one of the one of the key element that um, many. Uh, many other services uh, to learn languages on, online are missing. That is like the, uh, the real interaction with the, with the native speaker. So we, we try to facilitate that as much as we can on the site. And that's like, I hope like it's useful for you guys, not just like to get in touch with the, with the right accent and with the right, uh, or like with the, the kind of language or regional accent that you that you prefer, but really to get in touch with the culture of that uh, of that specific language, because like if you're, I think that's one of the main drivers that push you like to learn that language. It's not just like to be able to speak it, but to be able to understand what's what's behind that language, right? There is like 
all that substrate, cultural substrate that that makes a language and that the language enabled this culture to to exist to begin with. So that's that's also why uh, uh, Ivan, for example, participate with uh, to Wikiton, right? Oh uh, yeah, Wikiton. To to actually preserve like endangered languages, just because um, if when a language is it's it's gone, it's not just like the language itself that is gone. It's like that particular way to see the world. So um, for us, like uh, enabling people like to to connect with native uh, native speakers and native teachers, it just like enable people from all around the world to see like to see the world like through another culture, through someone else that lives on the other side of the world, or maybe it's just like the nation right next to you, right? But it's still something that you can do like in an afternoon when you have time and it's like uh, a very life enriching experience anyway. So yeah, like I guess most of you guys know already uh, our services, but just like to, uh, for, for the ones of you that haven't tried it all, or like for the ones of you that are new, like I just wanted to remember that uh, at Italki we just do um, we have two main sections of the site. Uh, you can have uh, lessons with teachers or with community tutors. Uh, 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 professional teachers are uh, certified uh, language teachers, like with uh, with a background in education and uh, with experience in that. And community tutors um, are like passionate people that are native speakers of their language but that might not necessarily have a, a degree in education and um, and that's like a way to you know enable like you know polyglots like you for example to still like convey the passion of 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 the language without necessarily having like the restriction of having a degree because I guess most of the polyglots here might not have a degree but might actually be much more knowledgeable in languages than many language teachers sometimes so uh, and in many other languages sometimes but and then we have all the community part uh, in the community section of, of italki you can find uh, a few tools that enable you to connect to the to the rest of our community so for example you have you can uh, you can go on language partner language exchange to um, to find some other uh, native speakers of that uh, of the language you're trying to get in touch with and uh, really you know connect with other users and pretty much we're trying to enable like a little bit of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, language education in this way. Then we have answers so you can just crowdsource some uh, some quick question about the language specifically and get replies from native speakers. Um, notebooks, that is one of like uh, the features that uh, most of the people uh, use that is basically just enable you to write a little exercise and also get it corrected by teachers and by uh, native speakers. Uh, and discussions where uh, you can, it's basically a forum where you can engage like with the community in any sort of topic. Finally, as we were saying, uh, italki, it's, it's all about immersing yourself in another culture. So we believe that through a language, it's like a, uh, one of the best way to do so. And like uh, uh, probably games and, and phone apps might not be the best way to engage with a culture but I think like the human connection it's what really makes it special and so yeah that's that's what we're trying to do uh, pretty much every day and uh, yeah that's why we redesigned the site this way and you will see more uh, toward this direction in the next months and years from us all right so that was it from from my side and I'm gonna give the mic to Roman that is our app developer Hello, everybody. Dajia hao. Doi zhe dajia hao. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's, yeah, different languages. I would like to present <laughs> the Italki mobile Android app. I think it is uh, happening for the first time in front of a live audience. Um, but first, a couple words about myself as well. Um, I haven't been working there for a very long time, only one year now, but I signed up quite a long time ago, in 2008. <laughs> uh, then, um, um, as uh, you know, we all live in China, and I want to say interesting thing about my hometown. I'm originally from Russia, and my uh, hometown name is called Gatchina. It has China in it. 
<laughs> even uh, the symbol of the town, um, uh, our palace, has like Chinese pagodas on top of it. I don't know, it was kind of fine. <laughs> now I've been living in China for already seven years and I had chances working for these um, companies you probably heard about. I made the Android apps for them as well. And uh, last year I had uh, some experience in AliExpress. But yeah, I, I quit Alibaba to work for it, okay. <laughs> now, now I want to um, uh, uh, tell some more about the app. Uh, so, um, um, at the moment we see it as a, uh, we present as more like a companion app. Not all the features are yet implemented, but with every new update we are um, we're having it uh, yeah, included. So, uh, as you see, it is the teacher-student communication in the app. It's actually a very simplified scheme of it. If uh, you get to problem uh, in the session, it will be even more my saving. At the moment, they will ask you to go to website. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I wonder how many people here are registered and have Android uh, mobile phone? Uh, registered users, yeah. Okay. Have anyone already tried the beta from Google Play? Oh, nobody. That's, uh, that's good. <laughs> um, also about the history of the app development. We had it, but it never been published, like the old design. Um, when I just arrived, it, mm, I think it was outsourced, and then it was, it was a little messy. Too many people worked with it, so I had to do a complete like refactoring of the whole system. That's how it looked in the very beginning. Uh, uh, I think the colors already changed. I didn't find the screenshot with old colors, but it, yeah, it was the original design. And now how it looks, uh, it is how it looks now. Uh, we are getting closer to Google material design concepts and uh, yeah, the, the look and everything, the feel improving with every, uh, with every update. Um, so uh, if nobody here had the um, app installed during our beta testing session, I think we had close uh, beta testing in uh, February and we were releasing um, like a uh, new update every week and many people help us and <laughs> thanks very much to those uh, who made it. Um, and uh, nowadays I think uh, we are reaching 10,000 users and mostly like uh, organic. We, we don't advertise it very much. And um, about some stats, uh, we are already sending around 10,000 push notifications on users' phones. And uh, yeah, please try it, and if you like it, um, give us some review. I'm very happy when this was green, not red. <laughs> Most of red one is because we don't have sign up through the app yet. Uh, if uh, we check like Google Analytics, it says what at the moment, around 50 people use the app. Uh, um, then, uh, of course, I didn't build the app only by myself. We are the team, there is a back-end, front-end, there is only uh, two of us now who are working on the Android app, uh, Alex and me, and iOS is coming, need to wait a little a while. But it's under development. Mm. If, uh, yeah, if you have Android uh, phone now, please uh, follow this link. Uh, it will redirect you straight to Google Play. And uh, if these words are not scaring you, if you're familiar to this uh, system, so this languages we are hiring and yeah please contact us <laughs> thank you all right so that's the rest from us but really we would love to hear from you so if there's any questions comments concerns suggestions please let us know okay let's start on the right um uh, I just wanted to say, in which position should I stay? Okay. I just wanted to say that uh, I also have a blog, uh, and I uh, used to be a part of your. Um, uh, how would you say that? Action? I don't know the word. Uh, like, but I was part of it in my blog, and many of my blog users used italki, and I used myself as well, uh, and it was a nice experience. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, a suggestion. There are many uh, 
blog users that ask me about teachers in their own hometown and uh, you don't have any way to control um, how people teach because it's, use, it's usually Skype but it's not implemented in the website so it's used uh, in a, an external way so wh uh, what, um, what's the problem of also including one-on-one uh, -on -one teaching face-to-face -face, not only online teaching uh, in one platform so that people can also find teachers that teach one-on-one -on -one, not only online so uh, originally the website did have um, a feature of finding people close to you um, of a lot of users have sort of uh, mistaken I talking for a dating site we are not uh, and uh, as, as much as all the uh, all the language learners, as much as um, uh, we love one another, really, there's uh, there's more important and interesting discussion to be had on Italki than um, seeing um, <clears throat> people close to you. So we found that it interfered with the user experience uh, for a lot of people, and we found also that uh, fundamentally the the language exchange thing you can find uh, you can find tutors online through other things. It just it wasn't as important of a piece for us to solve as getting our core mechanic down, and so we're, we're just trying to concentrate on getting, uh, getting the core mechanic right first. Uh, there might be f uh, new features that would uh, use location, especially since we're pushing mobile development, but at the moment we just want to make sure that the, the one thing that we do, we do well and without any problems, and then we will start worrying about other features. And the also a main reason is the, the simple fact that we really try to connect uh, native speakers like to to local students, and we believe that most of the native speakers, uh, or like most of the native uh, teachers, are actually not necessarily like around you. Um, I think that was one of the main key points why Italki itself was born to be able like to connect you to someone that it's actually not within your proximity range. So uh, while this is certainly a case, and uh, for example, um, on the site you still can search like uh, on a city level like in, in, your, um, in the partner search, um, it was never a, a, big, a big request for, for teachers specifically. Um, you can still see uh, among the teachers like if there is someone available in, your, um, in, your, in a specific region because you can, you can search by the country where they reside and if they want, they can also, the teachers can also write which city they are in. Uh, within a specific language we only have maybe maximum like a, uh, within a specific nation we have maybe maximum like one or two hundred teachers and like that gets smaller and smaller when you when you scan through the specific sub region so it should be still easy like to find uh, like a teacher in the specific in your specific location if you really need so Anyway, it's good to hear your feedback. Like we'll we'll look into that and facilitate that more. Yeah, and if you'd like to cooperate further on blog and promotional stuff, talk to me afterwards. Um, yes. Hi, uh, I'm a Cantonese tutor on Italki, and <laughs> I just have one question and one suggestion. So the first question is, how do you review uh, the application from tutors and teachers like because uh, as a tutor I, I actually have an education degree but I feel like okay I have to be professional even if I'm a tutor um, I sound a bit weird with this and when I want to apply for becoming a teacher uh, a tutor I found it a bit unfair because you wrote um, so we don't need these language that uh, these teachers now, so I'm like Chinese <laughs> and English. Uh, so, but I speak Cantonese, so I feel like, oh, so should I still apply? And uh, so, but I still apply, and you admitted me, so it's, it was great. And so, I just want to know how do you reveal on um, the application, and what are the criteria? And another suggestion is sometimes I really need uh, reviews from students, like I want to hear from them, but you know, you can't force them, hey, give me comments, hey, praise me, like you can't do that, right? So you have to uh, kind of passive, but I, as a teacher or as a tutor, you need reviews, 
because people wouldn't know uh, how's your teaching style and until they, they try, uh, until they uh, take lessons from you. And this is uh, also a, an experience as a t uh, language learner myself. Sometimes I really ne need to take a uh, trial lesson, but you know, I'm just <laughs> a student and I don't have a lot of money to spend on mm -hmm. expensive teachers because some of them, they, they charge quite expensive, right. like German. <laughs> and most of the German teachers, uh, there are not many tutors, a German tutor on I don't I know, and they mostly charge quite expensive. Mm -hmm. And so I, then some of them don't even uh, offer trial. So <laughs> you can't have a, uh, like, or you can ask them to maybe make a trial or uh, screen cap some of the teaching. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just a, a thought. And or you can do something like couch serving. They they use some um, tabs like after um, experience with the host, they can choose like he's fun, he's like knowledgeable or something. Just you can put put some like um, default um, comments that people can just simply play because some people are just too lazy to write. Right. So that's a suge suggestion. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Well, what's your name again? Khalif? Yeah. Thank you, Khalif. Uh, Tracy, do you want yeah. to start? Yeah, I can take it. Um, so I hope you all heard her say that, that German teachers can charge kind of high prices <laughs> and that we don't have very many of them. So anybody who wants to be a German teacher, like, yeah. Or if you want to learn Cantonese or, or Chinese. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I want to, I think I want to address the feedback first and then I can talk more about how we do the teacher applications and how we choose which languages we're looking for. Um, so feedback, uh, we know that there's a lot that can be improved with the feedback system. That's that's actually one of the things that we have charted to work on. Um, I'm, I'm not sure yet exactly how we will improve it, but we do want to make it easier for students to leave more detailed feedback about teachers. Like you said, it's very important for students when they're considering a teacher profile to be able to get as good of an idea as possible, not just from what that teacher says, but from what other students say about how they're able to work with that teacher. Um, so I can't thank you very much for those suggestions um i've written them down and like we will take that into consideration as we've taken a lot of other suggestions problems that people have written to us before about the feedback those have actually gone into a giant trello board if anybody uses trello and yeah uh so they're saved we we save all of the feedback and um you know the complaints, suggestions, everything, because we want to know what's actually important for you guys and what would help you most. So that's that's going to go in there and we'll take it into consideration. Um, teacher applications. I, I could talk about this a lot, so uh, you know, any other teachers, I can tell you more in detail later on. Um, but just for starters, we do try to keep a, a, an eye on what the language supply and demand is kind of on the site because we want students to be able to find teachers and we also don't want teachers to be disappointed by becoming teachers and then not getting any students. Um, we, we're still working on this, but and we've actually just within the last uh, week or two, I think we changed the which languages we're looking for um, because we didn't want to have people spending lots of time and effort on their applications and then for us to have to reject it, not because it's a bad application, not because they're a bad teacher, but just because we don't feel confident that they'll be able to get students right away. Fortunately, uh, I happen to know that now almost all of our languages are in much higher demand, so please <laughs> send me your teacher applications. Um, and for, uh, as far as the application process, we do look at each application individually. So the way that a person applies is they fill in an online application, uh, which looks like a profile. It's, it's kind of like a teacher version of the, the learner profile. And if that application is accepted, then that information becomes the new teacher profile. So we look at that and we look at, we look at the written introductions, we look at the videos, we look at the pictures. We try to get a sense not just of how qualified this person is, but you know, in terms of having uh, academic qualifications or a contract or experiences um, and look at who this person is, right? Like, would I feel comfortable recommending this teacher to students? Those are the people that we're looking for. Uh, there are the two different kinds of teachers. There's the community tutors and the professional teachers. Uh, if you have an education degree, um, I mean, it really, it's up to the individual application. We have a list of the types of certifications that we're looking for, but we're always happy to look at the individual applications. See, okay, well, you have this certificate, but you also have this experience, but you've done this for how many years? Oh, that's cool. You know, we'll put that all together. 
Uh, so if you have any other questions, I, I could take a look at what exactly that degree is, um, or we do have a very responsive uh, support team, and we're ready and able to answer questions like that too. We will get back to you. Uh, sorry, did that did that address your question? <laughs> Just like. Uh, yeah, as part of my question. Yeah, because one of my friends, she was rejected because uh, she's a German speaker, by the way. So uh, just because the <laughs> video quality was not good. <laughs> yeah. So um, and I, I mean, um, from percent. Yeah. Uh, what about the language? Like, if she's she claims she can teach Cantonese, mm -hmm. but she speak like in an accent, is that a problem or? Or she claims she can teach English, but she's not a native. But is that a problem? Like, so uh, yeah, very detailed. Um, yeah, no. I, like like I said, we consider each of the applications individually, and we do take into account what the supply of languages is on the website is. So you know, for example, we have tons of English teachers. So we're much less likely to accept someone if we feel like we would. It's it's if we would recommend that a student to work with that teacher. Uh, but I know there's lots of students that would still be happy to work with a teacher even if they do have an accent, especially if it's hard to find those teachers. And I mean, it's hard for me to tell you when you say accent, is it just like, oh, I can tell that you're from that country, or is it like, it, you know, it's hard to understand kind of uh, you know, where it actually is making it more difficult to communicate. Um, we do look at the videos. We have a lot of people in the office that speak a lot of different languages. And uh, if we're not sure, just from our own check, we do have a panel of teachers that we trust and that we can ask to help us evaluate new teachers. And just to conclude, like we're here also to get your feedback. So we yes. love to get these this questions. And like uh, the time, it's uh, limited. So we'll try to keep the next question a little shorter uh, replies. And we'll, uh, but you know, we're here on purpose to hear from you. So yeah. feel free to get in touch with us later on at the lounge. Like we're there, like on purpose, like to to get your all of your question and try to address it if possible, like in person. So we're here. You don't have to send an email. <laughs> all right, next one. Uh, one in the back. Since we covered the front already, uh, we get. <laughs> I'd like to ask which uh, method is uh, different than uh, you have in this company than other companies like Skipper, the Academy Bricks, and uh, other companies that we can buy books by uh, by the libraries like Rosetta Stone and Michelle Thomas. What is uh, the the good and the advantage in your teacher methods than other language methods like other also Skipper, the Academy Bricks have also online teachers. Um, so it sounds like you're asking about different published language learning methods. And uh, other companies, also that rival your company, Skipwright Academic Press. Okay, um, uh, I'm not sure if I quite understand, so let me take a stab and then I'll probably hand the mic off. Um, so there, there are a lot of different published methods, Michelle Thomas, Rosetta Stone. Uh, I mean, really one of the, the important parts of the model that we're trying to work with is that we believe that teachers and students can figure out what works best for them. So if Michelle Thomas works for you and it is an excellent program, like do that, right? Uh, if a teacher can help you with that, like also do that. <laughs> um, and there are a lot of other learning methods, websites that we think work very well in, in addition to working with a teacher, right? We don't think, I mean, you don't have to only have a teacher. Lots of our students work with teachers and on Duolingo and on Memorize and on, you know, you have a whole collection of resources. Why not use them all? Okay, so I asked something. Um, can you just give a short list of languages that are high in demand, low in supply, and are you willing to accept teachers who maybe not have certificates but just are native speakers and have some experience? And what kind of hourly rate could they count on receiving from italki? Okay, so uh, we still cannot approve uh, in the professional teacher category like the teachers that are not professional. I mean, that's like a pretty clear demarcation line. Uh, although, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm basically special. like what, what Andre is saying, we do have those two categories of teachers. If you're already a professional educator, if you're already licensed to teach, you can be a professional teacher. 
If you're not, uh, if you don't have professional certification or experience, that's great. You can be a community tutor. I think there were already a couple of hands up here of people who say they're already teachers on italki, um, so you might also be able to ask them. Community tutors don't need professional certification, uh, but they do definitely need to be very patient and helpful and friendly, and it's it's excellent if they have any other kind of expertise, like uh, perhaps they're professional translators, or perhaps they have helped all of their college roommates learn a new language, or you know anything like that. that really does come across in the profile, and we do take that into consideration. Uh, was there a second part of that? What language is exactly? Oh, right, sorry. Um, Japanese, German are the biggest ones right now. If you can teach Japanese or German, like, please, please sign up. Uh, was it? Korean, too. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, Korean is also uh, an important language. Uh, and really, any language that you want to teach, uh, if you have an interest in teaching online, just apply anyway. Even if we have a lot of teachers, we will still try to work with you. We will still yeah. give advice about your profile, about improving your video. And you know, we are also here. We have our space uh, around the corner in the Ataki Lounge, and we'd be happy to help you improve your teacher video or your application or anything of the sort. And in terms of uh, rates, uh, we you know, it's set by the teacher. It depends on supply and demand. We imagine the beginning teachers when they have a, a few sessions they have uh, they charge anywhere between what 50 ITC to 150 so there, there is like a minimum rate that you can't set below um, a lot of new teachers start off with very low prices just to get their first students and get their first feedback as you said that's very important um, speaking of feedback uh, <laughs> and it, after that, it really depends on the country that you're living in, the language that you're teaching, how much you think your own time is worth. You know, is it just a, a conversation class where you chat, or did you put a lot of effort into that? Did you find some materials and you picked out the videos and you timed the class? Like those, uh, I I can't tell you how to set your your price for that kind of effort. And so we really leave that up to the teachers. That being said, um, I do want to see more and more teachers able to create lessons and packages that they can charge higher prices for because the work of education is valuable. Also, if you can teach French, please apply. <laughs> All right, yeah. got a question here. Hello, uh, I'm an uh, italki user. Uh, I like it very much, by the way. And I have a suggestion. Is it possible to add, like, um, record the voicing part in, in this part with the exercise? Because we can write an, exer an exercise. If it's possible to add, like, a, a recording part, because uh, we could have a feedback from native speakers from, from the community uh, concerning our pronunciation also. Yeah? So that's a suggestion. Uh, uh, and, the, and the other suggestion uh, is, is it possible to add a, a kind of a motivational system for, for the users, for them uh, to be more um, uh, re uh, reliable when it comes to a Skype conversation? Because uh, uh, that, that happened to me very uh, many times that I looked for a language, uh, language partner and someone thought, okay, we are going to talk someday of, of this day, and uh, uh, usually people uh, don't, don't talk to you, yeah. uh, unless unless you uh, you look for a, to a, a, a payable t t tutor or teacher. So is it possible to create a, a kind of like motivational system? Or, uh, if if the user t um, the more people the user uh, talks to, the more I don't know I talk points or virtual money he gets to to receive some some kind of. Uh, 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 reward something like like to motivate them to really talk to people not for money just for people to practice their native language with them yeah thank you and I can reply this question for from you and uh, yes we're looking into that stay tuned <laughs> no I, we cannot we cannot uh, um, make public like too many of the things we're working on but like we're we're a growing team like we're looking into many of these fields that um and things that you that you just mentioned and uh, yeah just keep an eye on it like in this year uh for sure like uh, there will be a lot of things coming up on the apps especially so yeah both of them yes yes stay tuned keep an eye on it like Something like that, it's, uh, we're, we're looking into that. <laughs> Thank you again. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, I just have a suggestion as a teacher. 
Um, I find that it would be extremely helpful to have a sort of online community for teachers to exchange ideas and to talk about lesson plans and to, you know, I have questions that my students ask which I wish that they could see so many presentations that I've seen here to understand what language learning is. Um, and just to talk to other teachers about that and how to communicate with students about language learning and you know get ideas and i do take classes from other people and i get ideas from them but it would be great to have like a sort of professional exchange yeah so yeah like a forum or even a facebook group or something like that would be really helpful i think what's your name nikki yeah. Cool, Nikki, thank you. Yes, awesome. I also desperately want a teacher's community for us. One of the problems that we have with that right now is it's, uh, I would want to have sort of a private teacher's community. We haven't decided what to do about in terms of you know how we manage it, if it's private, if it's public, how to expect from teachers, uh, but we do want that and I am thinking about it. Yeah, thank you. I'll put your name on the list. One last question. Uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll be able to answer one more question and then uh, come join us in the lounge and drink coffee and finish snacks and ask us more things and write things down and, you know, you, you give us stuff to right? Yep. So I'm going to extend this because this is not actually a question, so if someone think of their last question. But to answer the part about recording, I work for SoundCloud and there is a possibility to obviously comment on things. So that's if, I don't know what the plans are for recording and things like that, but the, con the, the commenting system works extremely well. Thank you. Okay, this was a comment, so it doesn't count as a question. We have another question. Let's, let's hear it from here, Leah. Like you're on our homepage, so we have to give the mic to you. Yeah, uh, I would like to give a um, happy note for the end. So, uh, what are you the most proud of in um, in the recent changes in Itokai? You, you do a great job, and I would like to hear that. <laughs> well, internally, like we are never satisfied about our job basically so we see like all the nitty-gritty of like the behind the scene and we're always striving like to to improve like constantly and we have like a an international team like working in china we're behind a great firewall like we we have like many challenges and like like i think the the best part is that when when we get the comments from you and like it looks like everything seems to work fine it's like Really? Oh my God. <laughs> That's great. That's great. It's like because the the thi all the feedback that we get, like uh, we are there, like to solve the problem. So basically, we always get to see the problems, and sometimes we we get less to see the, the things that really works. So. That's nice to, to see like all of you here that actually use the system and actually uh, some of you like it, hopefully, and uh, you're still there. So that's like probably the, the best thing that like, you know, why we're here. Yeah. You can be proud. Um, keep working hard. You can be proud. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, so uh, yeah, I, we're going to wrap up. There's going to be a talk uh, happening here again soon, I think. Uh, but yes, please do come visit, uh, share a cup of coffee with us, uh, give us any feedback you can. Uh, the Italki Lounge is just down the hall, up the lobby to the left. Uh, and uh, we will be giving away prizes for completing the polyglot card things. So uh, find a partner, find somebody who, who knows one of the languages there uh, to help you solve it. Yeah, people are walking up to the cards and saying, I don't know all these languages, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a crowdsourcing exercise. Uh, till 7.30 or 8. Oh. Right. Uh, thank you very much.